So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Carl Magnus Högkorp. I'm the acting CEO of uh, Cyxone, as mentioned. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today and present Cyxone and our current activities. So, um, just a quick reminder here, uh, some disclaimer regarding forward-looking statements that will be um, done here in, in this presentation. Cyxone is currently having two assets in its um, portfolio. Uh, Rebexamod, which is indicated for rheumatoid arthritis, and T20K, which is currently developed as a new th uh, treatment for multiple sclerosis. Um, the current management team consists of myself, who is acting CEO, as well as Chief Operating Officer. We have Chief Financial Officer, Officer Hendrik Hang and Chief Development Officer Erika Samuelsson, um, all with uh, long-term experience in their various expertise fields. Uh, we, are, we have a very experienced scientific advisory team uh, with uh, Jürgen Rees, who has uh, spent uh, many, many years at Böhringer Ingelheim uh, and uh, launching a number of drugs in autoimmune, uh, autoimmune diseases, as well as Martin Kron, who is a rheumatologist and have been part of several um, drug development programs in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, for the preclinical research, we are working with uh, Professor Richard Holmdahl, who is a uh, distinguished immunologist and inflammation researcher here at uh, Karolinska in Stockholm, as well as Professor uh, Christian Gruber, who is based at Medical University of Vienna and is a renowned expert in cyclotide technology. Now, so uh, the portfolio consists of rebexamod, which is indicated for rheumatoid arthritis. It's currently being, um, uh, is currently entering phase 2b studies. Uh, the other asset, T20K, is in preclinical uh, activities and is about to enter clinical trials later on. Uh, today I will focus on talking more about uh, our main um, asset, uh, Rebexamod, which is the most advanced asset. Uh, so rheumatoid arthritis, we have touched on it before. So uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a uh, lifelong chronic disease which um, causes pain, joint deformity, and bone erosion. It requires lifelong uh, medical treatment, and roughly 20 million people suffer from rheumatoid arthritis today. Many of these do not benefit from the current uh, drug treatments that are available. And uh, therefore, it, there is a, a strong demand for new drugs, especially oral drugs. So lack of treatment response and safety is the main drivers for novel, effect, uh, novel therapies. Uh, and uh, the current treatment guidelines uh, provides drugs in the beginning of the treatment cycle which are quite burdened with safety effects like uh, metotrexate. Uh, and the second tier uh, medications uh, will be expensive, uh, injectable uh, biologics and uh, JAK inhibitors. And uh, again, there's uh, quite a large fraction of the, these patients that do not respond to these treatments. Um, so the current treatment landscape uh, consists of a range of biolog expensive biologic treatments as well as uh, the JAK inhibitors, uh, which are oral small molecules, synthetic um, Drugs. However, recently, as we've noted, uh, JAK inhibitors received black box warnings by FDA and will be phased out from the market. Uh, so there is a need for other oral therapies to fill this void. So Rebexamod um, that is a very interesting can candidate here. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the mode of action, why this makes Rebexamod very interesting. So in 2001, uh, our medical advisor, Martin Kron, uh, made the following conclusion. Uh, 
Rheumatoid arthritis is predominantly a macrophage-mediated disorder. A reduction in synovial membrane macrophage content should be primarily primary aim of successful treatment for RA patients. But since then, there are no drugs on the market that actually targets macrophages. Uh, what is seen is that there's a lot of ther therapies that targets the downstream effects of macrophages. So single molecule, molecule targets such as TNF alpha, uh, the TNF inhibitors, selling for 20 billion US dollars per year, uh, IL-6 inhibitors and IL-1 inhibitors. Uh, and these effective molecules will impact on the local environment in the joints. Uh, there are a number of other uh, development uh, activities that target, again, single molecules, uh, impacting with the uh, adaptive immune system. Now, uh, this is where uh, Rebexmod comes into play, so because uh, Rebexmod is targeting the macrophage. Uh, and this we have uh, demonstrated in a range of uh, research activities uh, here, especially here in Stockholm, with various groups at Karolinska Institute, uh, demonstrating that Rebexamod not only suppresses the function of macrophage, macrophages, but also um, impacts on the establishment of these pro inflammatory macrophages. So, if uh, providing the drug early in the disease course, as seen here to the right, uh, you can effectively suppress the development of the disease. Uh, so this is uh, an, some in vivo data from animal models that uh, has been conducted by Richard Holmdahl. Um, if we then look into the clinical implications of this, uh, we have some data from our phase 2A study in rheumatoid arthritis, a study that uh, uh, included 224 patients. Uh, and we studied those over 16 weeks. Now, the interesting aspects of this, if you look to the left here, is that beyond the end of treatment at week 12, we see a continued sustained improvement uh, in the disease score. Uh, and this we see as evidence for an actual disease-modifying effects of uh, Rebexamod. And that is what we are going to build on now going forward in our upcoming Phase 2B study that is planned to start uh, during the autumn. So uh, our vision for Rebexamod is to eventually uh, sort of replace uh, or complement the standard first line standard of care and to actually come in quite early in this disease course uh, and provide the clinical effects that Rebexmod has on macrophages early in the disease. Uh, and uh, by that we also uh, hope to delay and prevent the need for uh, treatment escalation with other uh, drugs. Um, of course, Rebexmol will enter a multi-billion market, and um, even if we're just capturing a fraction of that market, it uh, means that there will be a system, um, a quite large um, amounts of uh, revenue coming in for a drug like this. Uh, so, the high-level uh, plan now for uh, Rebexamod is that we are starting this Phase 2B study uh, and uh, we hope to have the readout then during 2024. We're also at the same time preparing to be able to start Phase 3 studies as this program has come to completion. Uh, this we will uh, be doing together with partners. So why invest in Cyxone? Well, uh, we have a very interesting drug that provides a novel uh, mode of action addressing uh, unmet uh, medical needs. We have demonstrated a very favorable safety profile for Rebexamod. Uh, and one other important uh, aspect is that it's a tablet and it's ease of use, uh, which uh, means more freedom for patients, not having to every second week go to the clinic and get injections. 
uh, we are addressing a large market with uh, large uh, underserved patient segments. And uh, of course, this would potentially be an interesting candidate to in license. You are, like you said, fully focused on the phase 2B study, which you have chosen to conduct in Poland, Hungary and Georgia. How come you have chosen those locations? Yeah, so uh, Poland, Hungary and Georgia are the first three countries that we start the study. Uh, we will expand the study to several other countries in Europe and uh, also hopefully the US. Uh, but this is uh, work that is um, ongoing right now to prepare for those submissions. But uh, Poland, Hungary and Georgia are very important from the perspective that uh, they will contribute to quite a, a number of the patients for this study, uh, especially Hungary and Poland, of course. Uh, and Georgia is of interest because that's where we also can quickly start the study, even though they might not contribute to the large amount of, uh, of patients. But it's a very still, still a very interesting uh, country in the mix. And you're then in the process of deciding which countries to add after that, if I understand you we correctly. We have already decided which countries to expand the study in, and we have um, confirmed all the sites that will be, um, be part of the study. Uh, what's missing is the regulatory approvals. And I, I, of course, have to ask, uh, considering the fact that this study will then, to some extent, be conducted in Eastern Europe, does the situation in Ukraine pose any challenges to this study? Well, um, certainly it did. So, originally we had a plan to actually include Ukraine um, among the countries in the study. Uh, Ukraine has historically been very important for this type of um, drug development activities. Uh, it's a large country uh, with a lot of patients, uh, but unfortunately we had to drop Ukraine from the list of uh, countries. And uh, it's projected to start this year? If I Correct. Yes, so uh, we're currently waiting for the regulatory approvals from Poland, uh, Hungary and Georgia and as uh, soon as we receive that we will start with the uh, site initiation activity. So uh, of course that will take a little bit of time uh, but uh, uh, hope to be able to enroll the first patients in the beginning of the year. And. Uh you are the, the acting CEO at the moment, and you've also recently hired a new CDO, if I got her title Correct. correctly. Uh, what, what will she bring to the, to the company? Yeah, yeah, so we're building a team that um, and is, knows this context, you know, the companies that we represent, that uh, we are listed on First North, uh, and whatever that entails, uh, comfortable with development activities uh, where, you know, there might be a, a little uncertainty going forward. Uh, so that's the kind of team we need to have in place that uh, has, has a good understanding of how to move these kind of projects forward. So can we expect more staff changes in, in the near future? I, I certainly hope so. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a very valued, um, high-valued high asset that we're working with. We need to have the right people in the team to move this forward. But we do have a very, very good team, professional team, uh, especially um, a team that works with um, um, clinical operations and uh, managing the CRO that we're working with right now. So uh, we have a, f a fantastic team, but certainly we need to grow in certain areas. Did we have any questions? Yes. Yeah, I have a, I have a question about the mood of action because as I understand it's a small molecule drug that is uh, acting on uh, M1 macrophages or pro-inflammatory macrophages. Um, my question is how is it selective for these macrophages and also um, if it's not, and if it's like broadly acting on a lot of macrophages, then how um, what is the problem with the infection inflammation from bacteria and so on in the patient cohort that is taking this drug? So what we have seen in, in our research activities that uh, Rebeximod is incredibly selective for pro-inflammatory and antigen presenting cells, so the activated cells in the disease setting, uh, whereas the 
the M2 macrophages, which are of interest to actually have in place, uh, are spared from uh, from Rebex mod, so uh, which makes this incredibly <laughs> interesting because uh, we are targeting uh, very sp uh, specific cells that drive disease. However, as you say, you know, uh, will this have any impact on um, infection, for instance? Because that's something you typically see for the TNF inhibitors and other um, biologics, as well as the JAK inhibitors. Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, we have so far treated almost uh, 300 patients with the drug, and uh, so far nothing like that has been uh, reported. Uh, we are quite aware of the safety profile for Rebeximod, and I think that's that's one of the interesting edges with Rebeximod compared to many of the other drugs that are out there. We we have looked at the safety profiles both for metotrexate, which is uh, quite an ugly drug, uh, and and also the biologics, uh, which you see a lot of still um, safety concerns with. But in that mix, comparing that uh, with what we all what we know today for Rebex mod, it does look very very good for uh, Rebex mod. However, we cannot say that it's a safe drug until we have conducted phase three studies, and ultimately, it's it's the regulatory authorities that give us uh, permission to use uh, this drug. And as a final question, then, if you were to come back here in a year, where would you want Cyxome to be? Uh, well, certainly it's uncertain times, uh, as we all know, uh, and it's it's difficult to predict the future. Um, but we we do hope that we'll be well into our phase two program, and that it's uh, uh, we're keeping the timelines and can be able to uh, will be able to report on the study results during 2024. Well, thank you so much, Carl Magnus. Thanks a lot.